Okay, so this is the anger bag, okay? I developed this intervention because I was working with so many children who were so angry, okay? Anger is a defense against pain. They're saying, I, I, I don't want to feel vulnerable. I need to be defensive. It's too scary for me to feel anything because really what they think is going to happen is they're going to completely fragment to pieces. So we want to help them manage that anger, give them some coping skills so they can slowly chip away at the wall that they've put up their defenses between them and themselves, between their feelings and themselves, because they do need to integrate it, like I've said before. Okay, so the anger bag is, and as you can see in your handout, I really broke it down for you so that you can really work on specific goals and work on symptoms, symptom reduction, symptom increase. You know, what we want to do is create self-awareness, create management here, create a sense of self-reliance and self-regulation. So what you'll need is a bag, and as you can see, I, I used to make these bags, and I had patented it at one point, and I was making these bags, but that's a whole nother business. <laughs> I'm not in the business of making bags. So you'll need any type of bag. I usually use the color red for anger. I use four basic feelings in my office. And why do I do this? Because again, these kids are so overwhelmed. They need structure in this limbic brain that is irrational, there's no structure. So I say red is anger, blue is for sadness, uh, yellow is for happiness, and purple is for fear. Black is really, really, really scared. So when we're making pictures, when I'm utilizing a, a color in an intervention, just so they can organize their feeling states. So that's why I made the anger bag red, because it pretty much is an associative color with anger. So what you need is the bag, uh, a pillow, and I'll show you how that works. So you'll need a pillowcase, a uh, paper to rip from an old phone, uh, any phone book, paper, you can find these, I steal them from the grocery store all the time, <laughs> um, Play-Doh, red Play-Doh, uh, bubble wrap, bubbles, and index cards for anger busters and anger busters what are they oh here hi come on in come in have a seat there's plenty of seats over here in the front row Anger busters are, what you can do for these is you can use any index cards, okay? I made them up a little special, and I'm going to give some of these out um, as little takeaways. I'll ask questions and see who gets them right, because um, these are a nice little, you just cut them, and they get placed in the child's bag, and they're anger busters, and I'll get into that. So, how it works is you're going to, tell the child, we're going to make a bag that has a lot of stuff for you to do for your angry feelings. Now, one of the key things here is this bag is utilized not in the midst of an anger episode. They can't do it. It doesn't work. This is used by a parent, social worker, therapist, when they know a child's experienced anger and they teach them how to express it because they need to be in their logic brain to do this. They're not going to be able to do it when they're in their irrational, illogical brain. Okay? So this is an exercise you're going to do for parents on a daily basis. We're going to let out some anger today. They don't have to be angry at that moment. We're going to do it, and we're going to connect. When we get angry, we express it. But research has found when children are in a behavioral episode, the midst of a temper tantrum, there is nothing you can do to change that temper tantrum, to calm down that you have to wait it out. This research recently came from England, 
you have to wait it out. So you have to be there with the child, yes, consoling them, yes, letting them know you're there, but there's nothing like screaming to a pillow, they're not going to be able to do it. After the fact, yes, you had a lot of anger today. Let's let some of that out by screaming it into a pillow. So the first one is scream pillow. So what I do with kids is I get an, uh, a blank pillowcase and I have them write on one side of the pillowcase, this is my scream pillow. They decorate it and you use those Sharpie pens. They love it. You can punch this pillow. You can say names into this pillow. You can say why you're angry into this pillow. This is serving as a container, a place where the child can project into, and pillows are always safe. Come on in. Oh, come on. Yeah, you can sit maybe over there. Okay, this is in their room. It's not for sleeping with, so it's not their sleeping pillow. It's for anger to project into. How many kids go to their room when they're angry? A lot. They have to leave the area. They can go, they can punch this pillow, they can scream into it, say words. I usually model for the child how to do it. And if I know a child's been having anger ab about a specific issue, I will show them how to do it. You know, with this population, we need to be direct. They need to hear from the big people. It's okay to say this, to express it, and it's okay to recognize and acknowledge I have this feeling inside of me. I need to express it. So, for instance, I've worked with kids that the birth father doesn't show up for the visit and the child is devastated and let down repeatedly. Well, I'm going to say, you know what? I could imagine you have big feelings and thoughts about your dad not showing up for the visit. So I'm going to show you how you do this. You're going to scream into the pillow and I'm going to do it for you first. I'm going to model for them. So a lot of these kids don't feel that they can do it, but once they see us do it, they can do it. They need that, that oomph, that drive. So I'll say, I'm so mad that my dad didn't show up for the visit. <gasps> and I'll show them how. And I play with them. You know, a lot of this work is helping them transform. We have to be playful. It's really, really important. Okay, so that's the screen pillow. So the next one is paper to rip. Paper to rip is, again, phone book and the child opens it up, they rip out a few pieces, and first they can say words, or first they don't have to say words. Again, I wanna follow the child's leads and express, I feel mad because, and this is where I'm also teaching kids I messages. An I message is saying with an I phrase, I feel mad, I feel sad, I feel scared. They need the language and they need the direction. So if they want to throw it up in the air and just think of something they're mad at, that's fine. If they want to rip it up and say what they're mad at, that's great. Now one of the things with this is, this needs to be designated in a certain part of your house. Um, the child can't just go and rip up paper. Um, it needs to be contained. There needs to be some rules around this that this is used with the parent in the room. The parent is present. If they do, if the parent does feel that they can utilize this skill on their own, you have a bucket for the feelings. And when I say bucket, I don't mean a trash bin because their feelings aren't garbage. They matter. So it's gonna go somewhere, not the garbage. And one of the things that I do with this intervention is this. When I do this in my office and I tell the child, you're gonna make a, you can make the biggest mess in my office. I want you to rip up this phone book and let out all those feelings, they love it. You need to entice them. You need to give them permission to let it out. It's cathartic. It's what they need. Wow, I can really have whatever big feeling I want here? Yes. And guess who's gonna pick them up? mom or dad, whichever parent is in the room. Why? 
because what we're going to do when the child scattered the pa ripped paper around the room is we're just going to sit and look and go, wow, look at all these big, big feelings. And sometimes when I have a parent who's not really understanding what it feels like, I go, I'm going to ask mom or dad to sit in the middle of those feelings and sit in it. I have had a lot of moments for parents they are like, wow. I get it now. It's so overwhelming. And the parent then, I ask them to pick up the pieces and I ask them to put it in, again, a pillowcase. And the parent can kiss the papers. It's pretty silly, but it works. And the child sits and watch, watches. And the parent picks up the pieces and can say, I understand these feelings. Thank you so much for sharing them. And they put them in the bag. After all the papers are picked up, I ask the parent to write something on the bag. And these are going to be feelings that the parent is holding on to. We understand. I hear you. I love you. So what I do is I instruct parents they're going to hold on to these big, big feelings. They're going to keep them close to them in their room. And throughout the week, I ask a parent to hold it. When they see the child, they show the child. You don't have to say anything. It's so powerful for these kids to go, wait, is that my dad with my feelings right there? <laughs> He's holding my feelings. What I'm helping children psychologically internalize is I have a caregiver with a continuity of care who's not abandoning me, who's holding on to me. Really important for these kids who've had multiple placements. They don't feel that someone is holding on to them psychologically. That's what this does. So I really like this intervention. This is an intervention in and of itself part of the anger bag that's been expanding. And a lot of these interventions do that. They just keep opening up because there's, there's so much room here to grow. And as you can see, these are creative. We're all creative. You can find something within this and go, wow, okay, I could do a whole session or a whole intervention just on this one piece. So that's the paper to rip. So the next one is paper to draw. Again, what I did was I researched all of the ways that a child can express their angry feelings. I'm teaching them coping skills. You can do this, 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 or this, rather than hitting, punching, screaming, bitching, and moaning. There are things you can do. And as adults, we need this too. <laughs> so paper to draw. You're just giving them a pad of paper. I've clipped like just regular printer paper together. And in your next page, I have paper to draw a picture about my feelings. You can just copy that, paste it on the front of this book. It goes in their bag. Paper to draw. It can be words. It could be pictures. I also ask families to, if a child is verbally aggressive, cursing, saying some foul things, allow them to put it in here. We need to meet them where they are. That's what they learned maybe in their birth family. But there's a place for it. Not with other people in your family, but if you really need to express that, put it in here. I mean, how many times as adults do we use cursing? And we need to learn too. It's not appropriate. There's a time and a place for it, alone in your bedroom or in your paper, on your paper. And we want to teach children there are boundaries. You can have those thoughts and feelings. Is that something you learn? You can put it in here. But they won't get in trouble for it, OK? Uh, Play-Doh Rip Squish Spaghetti. And I just created this little cute name. Uh, Play-Doh is a really good resource for kids. It allows them to express, get it out, and with a sensory tool. Play-Doh is really helps a child with proprioceptive input. A lot of these kids have sensory uh, dysregulation. 
they need things that where they feel pressure like falling onto pillows um, pressing into things so play-doh is a good uh, tool for them so what I do is I tell them and I'll entice them like I'm gonna show you you know because you're showing them everything that's in the bag for us I'm gonna show you what I brought here today this is how it works this is you rip it you squish it and you make it spaghetti just like that see and I kind of say I'm gonna show you two more times and the kids usually are like well I want to try I want to try the younger ones but I keep showing them and I'm like oh and I'm gonna get all those feelings in there it actually feels really good <laughs> to just let it out we all carry stress and tension and we need a release so this is a nice way for them to do it they can create their own name for whatever they want to call it so that they have their own tool that they can use to release that anger. Okay, anger buster poppers. Now I'm showing you all, of, there are 16 interventions in this bag, coping skills. What I typically do is I only choose, I have a child choose three. They don't need all of them. I'll show them and I'll go, you know, what feels good to you? What do you think you could use for your anger? What am I doing? I'm getting them to think and connect the dots for them because not everything is going to work for them. So I let them choose, and I'm also helping them place value on this bag because this is important. What three things will work for you? I love poppers. Have you ever used these for fun? <laughs> you get to pop them. So they have some in their bag. And I tell them, you think of, I, I educate them that, because what am I educating them on? We have stress cortisol flooding in our body. When we get really mad, there's little, little cells of stress going in our whole body. So each one of these represents the stress in our body. So they get to pop them out. We're going to pop all those stress cells in our body. So I let them squeeze it and squeeze it. Ugh. Some kids even want to put it on the floor. I let them take their socks, their shoes off, and stamp them out. What does this do? This transforms that cortisol into oxytocin, the love, playful hormone, which is what we want to teach them. That's, that's the psychotropic medication, is teaching them coping skills so they don't have to rely on medication. But as some kids do need medication, I don't want to rule out medication, but we want to give them coping skills and give them an opportunity so they can do it on their own and self-regulate. So this is a really fun tool, um, popping. And again, I'm letting out a lot of stress right here. It's fun. So that's a good one. Uh, the next one is Anger Buster Cards. Um. Anger Buster Cards, and here are a list of seven. Basically, the child writes on one side, Anger Buster, and on the other side, what they do, what the action is. So here, scream as loud as I can on my scream pillow. These are suggestions. These are what I found in research. I usually typically ask the child first, before I give them suggestions, what do you think will help you? What do you need when you're having big angry feelings? And ask them, I want to go run. I need to run. I need to ride my bike. Great. So then they have that coping skill and it's come from them. That to me is more important than the suggestions I have. If they're stuck, they need my help. Then I'm going to feed them, be direct, and give them any of these suggestions. So you can use index cards, and or you can type them up like I did. Um, but I'll be giving out a few more of these, so you'll have them. And then everything, so then you ask the child, you know, what three things do you want to put in your bag and utilize to express and help let out your anger. So I let them choose. Now another thing that I do, and I'm going to share with this to you right now, which is not here is I create these experience books for kids. I am the boss of my anger book. And then we do the I message, I'm angry, and I'll pass this around. I sh take a picture of the child angry, 
I feel like kicking when I'm mad. I show his poor coping skill. Because this is an experience book is showing the course of events. Then I show, I am the boss of my anger, so I will draw my anger. Then I'm transforming a new narrative, a new association. I can draw when I'm mad. I am the boss of my anger. I can rip up and release my anger, rip up paper. And I take pictures of the child doing this. Parents can do it. Um, really, really helpful. And then the child can go to this resource and look up and read it. You know, part of, and then I feel better now, part of emotional intelligence <coughs> is repetition. Bruce Perry, who's a leading psychiatrist in the field, says it takes repetition over and over and over to learn a new idea. Just like we learned 2 plus 2 is 4, we need to learn when I have anger, I rip up paper. When I have anger, I draw it. When I have anger, I go to my room and scream it in my pillow. They have an association. That's why you have to build this coping skill when they're not in the midst of the anger because that's the mistake that parents do. It's not working. Well, are you practicing it when they're not angry? That's the tool here. So here's this book if you want to uh, take a look at it. Thank you, Rebecca. And here, I can pass around these cards. Oh, here. Um, no, that's okay. That's good. Okay, so at the end, after the child has picked the three coping skills that they want to utilize, they're put in the bag. The bag is placed in a specific place in the house, in their room, wherever you know it's going to be kept safe and it's going to be used only for this purpose because it's not a toy. Um, and if a parent needs to put it in the kitchen or somewhere safe, that's okay. We want to really value what this bag is about. So that's the anger bag. We'll take some questions later. If you have questions, just hold on to them, and we'll come back to that. Um, OK, so next, and you can see you have paper to draw a picture about my angry feelings, paper to rip to release my angry feelings on the front of the phone book. And now we'll move on to the next intervention. <coughs> 